Embryana from Situate's very own SCTV coming to you today from the Accessibility Awareness event hosted by the Situate Commission on Disabilities. Today's theme is celebrating diversity. There are a ton of groups getting set up behind me. We're going to get to know them and get to know about some of the resources available for Situate residents and their families. This is our second annual um, Accessibility Awareness event, and our theme this year is Celebrating Diversity. So this is basically just bringing in service providers from all over the state of Massachusetts into Situate to meet with consumers, to meet with families, to meet each other, um, and just kind of learn what, what is available out there. Great. Could you talk to me a little bit about the theme this year, Celebrating Diversity, how you picked it, what it means, things like that? Yeah, so the commission meets once a month, and so we've been planning this for a while, and we just were kind of thinking of... Um, what we could do to bring the community together. And we didn't really have a theme last year. It was the first time we were ever doing it. We were not really sure how it was going to work out. Um, and so this year we, we thought, you know, um, it's just such an important uh, aspect of, of the town that, you know, not everybody has the same um, accessibility issues. And so just to kind of bring everybody together. Um, I'm Elena Chevry, and I'm with the Situate Fire Department. Great, so why don't you give me just an overview of what kind of services the fire department offers to residents of Situate um, with disabilities. Uh, we offer education. In their home or to per, for fall prevention or for fire prevention, make sure they have letters on their home, numbers on their homes, have an emergency plan, have a contact list in case when, with all our storms here in Situate, we always want to make sure that our, our people with disabilities have a plan in place so that we know where they go. We also provide a needs assessment form so these are with people with disabilities. It's also for children as well. And they can fill this out and bring it back to the, um, up to the station on 3A. And we can put this into our dispatch center. So if we do get a call to this address, we have more information. So it's, it's really a good system for us. My name is Michelle Moran, and I represent the Citra Coastal Coalition. Great. And what sort of resources does the Coastal Coalition offer for um, people with disabilities in Citra? What we had started back in 2011 is a Map Your Neighborhood program, which was adopted in Washington State. And we've adapted it more towards our area with disasters that might happen in this town, hurricanes, nor'easters. We um, go from, in our neighborhood, we go from house to house. We gather information, contact information, emergency contact. If you have special needs, we get that information and we forward that to the fire department. They keep that information and it's a way, and I compile everything for our neighborhood in a book so that we have contact information. In the event there's a storm or someone is hurt, you have someone else to get in touch with. So. I'm Jesse Fenney and I'm representing the town library. Great. Um, what sort of resources does the library offer that maybe people with disabilities in Situate could access? Yeah, so we offer a variety of resources, uh, especially people with people who have um, visual impairments. Um, so we have a variety of um, uh, options for them in terms of audiobooks. If you just have a, a partial visual issue, um, the downloadable resources that we have are all enabled so that they'll help people with those needs. Um, and a lot of our downloadable and, and sort of electronic products are tailored to meet needs of people with disabilities. Um, we have a new movie streaming service that has um, a variety of options for people who um, have hearing issues, um, even visually impaired. There are some, some movies in there for those people as well. So um, we have a lot of different uh, things and uh, the library is fully ADA compliant so we welcome everyone to come into the library and how, see how accessible it is. My name is Aaron Fergola and I'm with the Perkins Library located in Watertown. So why don't you talk to me a little bit about why you're here today and what your organization offers for residents with disabilities. Um, well, we are always looking to get out to as many locations as possible and speak to as many organizations as we can about our services. And this is a wonderful location that we always like to come to. The last year was the first year that we had been here. Um, but the view is great. Um, the weather is not exactly ideal, but uh, you, know, you can't always plan for that. Either way, um, we're here to just talk about what we're able to do for the community, um, the resources that other people can also share when, with. Uh, we don't just service uh, one location, but the entire state can actually receive our services. So any opportunity we have to come to these uh, individual communities and speak about that, we really appreciate that. So could you give me a brief rundown of what services you guys provide? 
So the library provides accessible reading materials, uh, accessible library materials for anyone who would otherwise be uh, would experience difficulties in doing so due to a visual or a physical disability, uh, MS, Parkinson's, cerebral palsy, someone who's had a stroke or head trauma, brain injury, uh, severe arthritis, loss of limb. Uh, macular degeneration is the number one reason why people come to us, but there are a lot of other people who are eligible and all of our services are completely free. I am Eileen Scotty. I'm the public health nurse for the town of Situate. And how about a little bit about what you're doing here today and also maybe what resources you offer for those with disabilities that live in our town? Well, as far as what I'm doing today, I am here giving flu shots as we have them. And what I can, what a, a resource that I would be for people with disabilities would be to try to hook them up with services. Um, also, I can do things like pick up walkers and wheelchairs and things at Etresco that I can put in the back of my car and deliver to them. If you bring something like that to them. They and she does home visits as well for your blood pressure and yeah, all seniors, yes. Yeah. So my name is Jason Neary and my wife Megan Neary started um, a group called S South Shore Algae Families Educating. And she started that with another mom in town who had children with food allergies. And the goal is to provide awareness and education to the community and celiac disease as well, that's, that's included, um, to, the, to the broader community and to provide support to parents and caregivers of, of uh, children with food allergies. My name is Jenny Gerbis, and I work for the Council on Aging situate here in Massachusetts. Great. And we're very familiar with the Council on Aging, um, but why don't you tell us a little bit about some of the f vast, I guess, um, services that they offer for those with disabilities? Absolutely. Um, we offer transportation to uh, not only seniors, but disabled um, adults in the town. We also um, offer SNAP food stamps, fuel assistance, that's for the whole town, but um, we'll do home visits for everyone and we just try to connect services and referrals for any needs that they, that they um, encounter. So we try to fill the gaps uh, for, for folks. For those who are maybe looking for in more information about transportation or things like that, how could they get more info about that? Uh, we have the the, bullet, the pamphlet here for transportation, and it's pretty seamless. It's just an application, and then you would co coordinate with our transportation director, Kathy Clarkson. Donna Shakroa, South Shore Elder Services. Great. So, what kind of resources does South Shore Elder Services provide for residents of Situate who might have disabilities? We cover. Um, situate as well as a loud, uh, larger 11 city and town region for people of all disabilities, abilities, seniors. We work with um, our collaborating um, agencies. We have a lot of community partners. So if we don't have the material, we'll work with the caller or the person and we'll look for what they need, call them back or refer them over to whatever they need. So in our intake department, someone can call with any question of any sort, and we will look to hook them up or refer them or answer their question or even provide the services right there, depending on what the situation is. But we will talk with them thoroughly and fully till we see how we can be of best help to them. Okay, I'm Margie Carr. I'm from Situate Housing Authority. So what kind of resources does the Housing Authority provide with those who may have disabilities? We have a certain percentage of our housing that is allowed for ages tw uh, 18 actually till 59. Okay, um, the wait list is approximately about five to ten years for somebody who is a resident. It's a real small percentage, it's mostly elderly but then there's non-elderly disabled. The nice thing about this is you can apply to Situate, but you can apply to any housing authority in Massachusetts. So we're going to um, have an online application, so it will be centralized beginning in January. DHCD is working on that. So as long as you can live independently, it should be no problem to be able to apply. I'm Amelia Sylvia and Friendship Homing is the 
So could you start by telling me a little bit about the organization? Sure. Friendship Home is a nonprofit organization that serves a variety of services to adults with special needs. Um, so we have an employment program, Bridges to Work. Uh, we also have a respite overnight program, which is operates nights and uh, weekends for individuals that are seeking independent living skills and or just socialization outside of home, which is great. Um, we also have our social recreation department, which has clubs, outings, um, theme parties and such for individuals who just are looking to really um, kind of fulfill their socialization groups and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, it's a smaller organization um, comparable to others that like Road to Responsibility and such. I'm Jean Petrillo and I'm with the National MS Society. So what kind of resources does the MS Society offer to maybe those in situate who might struggle with a disability? So. Um, Personally, I'm starting a support group um, in Hanover for the surrounding towns, Norwell, Situate, Hanover, Marshfield, at the um, YMCA in Hanover. Um, it's going to be starting in January 2019, and it's going to meet uh, once a month on the second uh, Wednesday of the month for an hour and a half, and we'll talk about wellness topics. We'll have a different topic every month. One month will be nutrition, and it'll be all how nutrition impacts MS. And another topic may be exercise or resilience or sleep issues. So we'll have a topic. Everyone will bring their own um, experiences with them. We'll have a lot of information from the National MS Society that we'll present to people. And it'll be a, hopefully a synergistic experience for everybody. Yeah. So that's that's my own thing. Um, as far as um, situate in general, we have the... Um, ride at Cape Cod Getaway that goes right through Situate. It's a bike ride from Boston down to Provincetown. Uh, we have the MS Walk in Cohasset. Um, there's lots of, lots of issues. Yeah, exactly.